Today I'm visiting with leadership consultant, author, and uh, coach, speaker, John Baldoni, and he is the author of now 10 books, 10 books? Uh, on various subjects, but mostly around leadership. He's been named one of the world's top 25 leadership experts. He's quoted in numerous publications. You write a column for Inc., uh, for CBS, um, well known throughout the, the leadership community. And um, your, your latest book, uh, which caught my attention, Lead with Purpose, uh, is giving your organization a reason to believe in it itself is, is so important uh, to, to running companies, to running nonprofits. You know, no matter what you're running, uh, purpose is, is so important. So, so let's start with that, purposeful organizations. Um, when you think about a purposeful organization, what, do, what does a purposeful organization do? Uh, you talk about it, you know, as a great enabler, linking things together. Explain that. That's a good question. And, you know, even though I wrote a book about it and teach it and talk about it, sometimes the question always throws me because, uh, which maybe is a reflection on me, but actually I think it's the magnanimity of this, the, uh, the huge uh, size of the issue. You know, when we say purpose, it can be very personal, but it can also be organizationally focused. So the challenge is to how do you make it scalable? How do you get your arms around it? The way I answer it is when I, I have the privilege of going in and out of lots of different organizations and meeting lots of different people. And when I go into a, an organization I would consider purposeful, it's almost tangible. People walk around with purpose. In other words, they know what they do. They like their work. Very often as employees, they smile more. They're engaged with you. Um, and they, they interact, they want to help you. They know how their job complements the whole. And that's really what the critical uh, thing is. They, they know that their work has meaning. Their manager has taken time to connect whatever it is they do, be it logistics, be it marketing, be it uh, product development, to say what you do in this field connects to our functional uh, expertise as well as our organizational expertise. This is how we serve our customers. This is how we do it. So it's a kind of a tangible thing. I'd like to say that purpose is maybe that great untapped reservoir because a lot of organizations have it but don't know they have it and they kind of let it lie. And in not touching it and not using it, they're giving up an advantage. And the great thing about instilling purpose is it's free. It doesn't cost anything. It's what your organization does. So why not use it? Why not use it? Well, I'm thinking back to something that probably prompted you to really think about this subject of purpose and, and leadership in organizations is this experience you had going into an Apple store. I'd love for you to tell us tell us that story. Oh, thanks. That's one of my favorites. You know, I went in to an Apple store. I was new to the, with the iPhone, and, and uh, I'm north of 50, okay? Let's, no, no surprises there. Um, and so I go in, and I walk to a young man, and I don't know if he had one earring or three earrings, but I said, when's Apple coming up with a detachable keyboard for that little iPhone? And he looks me square in the eye, and he goes, we are committed to the on-screen uh, uh, keyboard. We believe that's really the ultimate customer experience. Now, some people might have taken that as an affront. Okay? It struck say, you immediately. I need to write a book. Uh, <laughs> well, well, not quite that, <laughs> that, that, that. But I thought, that's purposeful. Now, how many times have you gone into a retail organization and said, ask for something that the store does not offer, and the, and the employee, the clerk, says, we Usually, well, they don't listen to us or they don't pay attention. Uh, but this gentleman said, we. He took ownership. He was proud to be an Apple employee. And I thought, wow, that's a sense of purpose. I see that same kind of commitment in healthcare organizations. I see that now in our automotive companies, which have come back from the brink. I see that in sports teams, which excel. We know what we stand for. We know our values. Um, and we are proud of uh, being part of this organization. We're proud of being a, a part of a cause greater than ourselves. And, and they're so engaged. And one of the, one of the quotes you have in the book that, that just struck me was engagement is rooted in purpose. Without question, you know, I mean, we, we, there's so much research and so much effort spending on employee engagement. Well, what does it mean? It's, hey, it, 
customer, I mean, employees like coming to work, you know, and, and they're, they feel they have a purpose. And so engagement, you can't be engaged in your work if you don't know what it means. You can't be engaged if you don't have a relationship with your boss. You can't be engaged if you don't know what the organization does. And it's up to the manager to connect the dots. That's a phrase I heard a lot of when I spoke to, uh, in my book, I did research with a lot of thought leaders as well as CEOs. And one phrase that appeared period that came up periodically was connecting the dots what it is that you do in your job how that helps us as an organization achieve well you, you know there's so many good ideas that you, you have you know you're kind of ideas throughout you have to stop and I always take notes on different things that I'm thinking of but one thing one chapter <laughs> well thank you yeah. well one chapter struck me because I, I thought well this is kind of at odds and that was this th there's this idea of being comfortable with ambiguity Mm. And I thought, well, that's really fascinating to me because ambiguity and purpose to me seem at odds in that, you know, one is clear direction and one is we're not quite sure. How, how are those two related? Well, I'm glad you touched on that because um, purpose is the point of clarity. It's up to managers to make their people comfortable with clear, uh, with ambiguity because it's we live in our 24/7 global economy we are subject to, to shock waves or opportunities that come from all corners of the earth so you can never really predict anything and also we're coming out of this great recession so there is the sense of unease so managers need to make it comfortable for people to feel a little bit uncertain is that possible always probably not but what managers can do is to try to strive for clarity clarify um, what the challenge is, what the situation is, what the context is, and what we can do. In other words, I like to talk about it as squaring the circle. So in other words, there are things we control and things we cannot control. Let's just focus on what we can control. Here's our challenge. Let's put, um, uh, I say, you know, square it, put a fence around it, identify it. Uh, and that's what we're going to focus on. We're not going to worry about the Malaysian economy. We're not going to worry about the challenge, uh, what our competitor in Germany may be doing. We're going to focus on what we can do and do that the best we can do. Now, that doesn't mean being blind to it, but as a manager, you want to focus on what you can do rather than what you cannot do, which is a wonderful quote that I've borrowed from John Wooden, the great basketball coach. Yes, so, and it's a great quote. Well, you know, I'm thinking about um, culture. And you see, you see these employees engaged and, and with purpose and, and, and power. What is it, you, you visit, I don't know how many companies a year, whether you're speaking to them or consulting with them and various things, and you can, say, you can see that tangible quality. What recommendations do you have or, you know, to create a, a winning culture that is purposeful? What, what do people, what tangible things can you actually do to say, I want to create this awesome culture? Right. Good, good question. I think it, it comes down to your vision, mission, and values. So, and this is where purpose is the initiator. The vision is your kickstart to what it is you. Uh, vision is your becoming. We want to become the best in our field in this segment. Okay, it's a process of aspiration. Mission is actually what you do. You know, this this is how we do things. This is what uh, we do. Our values are what hold us together. Our values lead directly to our culture, which reinforces our mission and purpose, the kind of people we hire, our norms, values that we connect with one another, how we um, work together, collaborate, coordinate, all of that stuff. So how do you develop a winning culture? Well, you talk about it. You, I think you need a purposeful organization. You need to know what your vision is, what your mission is, and what are the values. And so often, I think many companies or organizations have them, and very often they even print them on wallet cards, but they kind of get lost in the shuffle. They don't talk about them. And it's too bad, you know, because they've got, it's all there. Just make it tangible, you know. Relate it to the work. Give it significance in the daily activity, it encourages engagement and reinforces your culture. So. Well, John, it's, it's, it's interesting. The other thing I'm thinking of is, you know, I'm a CEO now of a large corporation, and yet early on in my career, I would read a lot of books, and I could see people reading saying, oh, yeah, well, if only my company and if my upper manager would have purpose, oh, boy, do we need this. Yeah. 
what is it if, if you're just starting out or if you're not at a management position, I'm a firm believer that everybody impacts culture and, and everybody can kind of make a difference. So if you're not in the place where, you know, I can set my department or I'm going to really clear values, and, and you feel like, you know, I can't set the, the values or I can't create a mission statement uh, necessarily, what, what do you do if you're, if you're there but you really want to help make a culture better? What, what does that worker do? Any, any ideas? Absolutely. Um, and uh, that gets kind of into the leadership quotient. And I would say that can anyone at any level can lead. What does that mean? It gets onto a sense of initiative and really the simple thing, I want to make a difference. I want to make a positive difference. So, yeah, what employees do, how they, how they work with their colleagues, how they relate to their boss, volunteering for assignments. And I don't mean um, working for free, but saying, hey, boss, I'd like to try that. Thinking about job rotations. Um, thinking, kind of adopting a bigger picture view of, you know, we're here in marketing, but how does what I do uh, um, uh, reflect what's going on in advertising or product development or logistics or whatever? Maybe having a little broader view. But basically, it's that willingness to make a positive difference. However you translate that into the daily activity. And a lot of it's kind of collegial, how you relate to your colleagues. Are you a team person? Um, do people consider you the go-to? You know, so often, Skip, and I'm sure this happened to you in your career, one of the reasons you were identified as an achiever was because you were a go-to person. You made things happen. Oh, we'll give it to Skip, and he'll make it done. And we see that over and over again in organizations. You know, there's nothing I can't give Skip. He's going to handle it. How many Skips are there or Susans are there in your organization to make that positive difference? You know, John, thinking about that person and that career path, you've also written about managing up mm -hmm. and, and how to work, work and get promoted. Without g going into all, of, all, all the ideas around that, is there something there of, of an idea that you say, you know, in your career, here's how to manage up, or here's how to get noticed when you're doing all of those things. Um, and it, it's a good point. It's, it's kind of what I just said momentarily ago, but let me reemphasize. It's lead with the work. And the work is purposeful, and the work is complements the organization. So first of all, you do your own job well, and do it well, and be considered. Be you have to have three things. Uh, competence, good in your job. You have to have a sense of um, credibility. People believe you can do the job. And you have to be have a sense of confidence. I can do the job. And I believe, uh, and others believe, I can do the job. So that ties in. But it's that kind of thing of, um, and when you're uh, going out and pushing something or persuading your boss, let the project lead rather than yourself. Now, what do I mean by that? You're the initiator, but frame it in, this is good for our team, this is good for you, boss, this is good for our organization, rather than this is just good for me, you know. And, of course, you'll benefit, well, ideally, you would benefit by being the initiator, but it shows that you're not a shameless self-promoter. You're thinking about the team. You're thinking about the company. And that is critical. I, I totally agree. I see that all the time. And, and people will be magnetized and say, give it to that person or, or what have you. And because the work's getting done, I, I definitely see that. Well, you know, I want to turn uh, lastly to uh, individuals. So we, we talk about purposeful organizations. And yet, also, it's it's purposeful it, it, from an individual perspective that you want to have uh, work with purpose. Uh, how do you nurture and create your your own personal sense of mission and purpose while in a work environment or or, or what have you? And what type of things have you learned in working with company executives and different corporations that actually help people say, you know, I want to clarify what what my own purpose is in in life. Uh, career, what have you. Right. Well, the most successful leaders that I've worked with are all very centered. Not self-centered, but I have a centeredness about them. They know themselves. They're self-aware. They know their strengths. They know their areas of improvement. They know where they need to hire people around them to complement them. And that sense of self-awareness is critical. It's also that kind of thing is, this is what I can do. This is what I cannot do. This is what I delegate. This is what I don't. I'll be honest with you, many hard-charging leaders really don't do a good enough job about taking care of themselves. And I don't mean they abuse themselves with, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, toxic substances, but I mean they, they're, they're kind of living at the edge and pushing in the organization and they don't take enough time to reflect. 
and they don't invest enough in their own time. And a colleague of mine, uh, Stu Friedman at uh, uh, Wharton School, has written a wonderful book called Total Leadership, which is all about the different domains, the self, the community, the work environment, and your family. What's important to you? Prioritize it. Um, I have found uh, women executives very good at prioritizing um, family and um, uh, a community making that thing. Men, I think, are a little bit um, less reluctant, I mean, more reluctant to do that. They kind of think, well, that's, uh, I'll just leave that, and they don't. And, you know, it's interesting, and, and we shouldn't. I did a column for uh, Harvard Business Review on this very topic about making time for yourself. Don't wait till the end. Now is the time to prepare for retirement. And I don't mean financially, but what it is you want to do after work. Because you should be doing it now. I mean, if you really like playing tennis or playing golf, do it now. Hone that. If you're, if you're involved in community activities, invest in that. Spend time with your children while they're young because that goes pretty, pretty quickly. I guess it's a sense of prioritization. You know, you could even say compartmentalization. And I know a lot of executives that go home and they say, you know, from 6 to 9, I will not do my email. And that's why you get emails from at midnight. But they say, you know, when I go home, this is my time for my spouse. This is my time for my family. It's a discipline. And when, they do, when you do that, if it's what you want to do, you'll feel better about yourself. And uh, how does that contribute to purpose? Why am I here on this earth? What is it that I want to do? I want to help my team succeed. What is it you want for yourself? What, do you, what difference do you want to make? So that derives that sense of purpose, too. Well, well lastly, I just want to touch. We've, we've dealt with a uh, difficult economy that we've been in, and everyone's in different stages, and some are emerging and some are still struggling, et cetera. Uh, have the phone calls to you been different in the last uh, few years, uh, more urgent about creating a purpose? Are companies investing in you know, creating a mission and, and, and living by purpose, or is there a different flavor to some of the calls today? That's a good question. I think the, and I actually did a column on this, the most over -word, overused word in the management lexicon right now is urgency. Everything's urgent. So if this is urgent, that's urgent. Nothing's Nothing. urgent, right? When well, you're a CEO, you kneel. So prioritization becomes a key. Um, I have seen a shift as the economy seems to be recovering. There's more investment in human development, coaching, uh, teaching. That stuff is, is coming back in a robust way. But I don't know about purpose. I think there are organizations that do it and do it well. They don't proselytize, if you will. So maybe that's my job. Um, and if I have, so maybe it's up to me to sell the concept, not me uniquely. A lot of people do it. They sell it by purposeful organizations will draw others to them as benchmark uh, things, as successful companies. And let's be honest, the, the reason a company exists, or at least in the private sector, is to earn you know, a re fair return on uh, shareholder uh, dollar, all of that. But we're looking for more than that, meaning for it. And so how do you cultivate that? And so that's where purpose becomes that differentiator, the purposeful organization. Employees want to work for that. And I think the war for talent that we, we used to use, I think it's coming back. I think it's that heating up. And a purposeful organization will be one that attracts uh, a higher caliber of talent. People want to work there. You, you don't, do you want to work for an organization where kind of people are just going along aimlessly? Or do you want to work where an organization where people are highly engaged, know what they do, know how their work makes a difference? And I think it's obvious. They it's want to always work for purposeful. Absolutely, both for a company and you want that person who you're thinking of who has that, that sense of purpose and urgency because it makes a difference in the, in the whole scheme of things. So this is excellent. And uh, Lead with Purpose is a great book. All of your books are. The, the, the one before it, I think, was, was this right before it, Lead by Example? Uh, lead Your Boss. And lead Your Boss was, was the one I'm managing up. So um, what are you working on next? I... Um, I am working on something I'm calling the Leader's Pocket Coach. It's a distillation of some best practices that I've observed, and it's very much focused on the leader as he or she relates to himself, personal self-development, uh, working with colleagues, and leading an organization. It's a very tactical and practical book, and got some assessments and action planners and all kinds of stuff in there, and I'm really excited about it. So I, I that will be out later this year. Well, you scour the world for great examples, and they're just they're full in all of your books of in columns of examples of great leadership. So I, I'm glad to talk to you. It's one of my passionate subjects to, to study. And, uh, 
uh, you can never learn enough about being a great leader. So thank you very much. Thank you, Skip. I appreciate this opportunity, and um, thank you. Thank you.